taking a look at deviation, uh, I've been going through uh, a series of study with you based on um, spiritual warfare, but based on the lesson that you've had and the lesson that we've been studying, um, I'm deviating from that today a little bit. And so this morning I want to look briefly with you. Just remind me what time we need to finish, please. Quarter to one. Okay. Um, this morning I want to look at uh, faith, hope, and love. Amen. Faith, hope, and love. <coughs> As we as we look at our memory verse again, 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 13, and it says, And now abide faith, hope, love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. Amen. Yeah. So faith, hope, and love. The greatest of these is love. So what is faith? I'm not going to speak to myself today. What is faith? What is faith? Believing the unseen. Believing the unseen. Okay. Uh, anybody else? What is faith? Hoping to receive something which you don't know where it's going to Looking for something that you don't know how it's going to happen. Okay, there's a little kind of mixture between hope and, and, and faith there. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Trust. Faith is, Trust. To, faith is to just to know the thing that you don't know. You didn't use it, but for the faith. Alright. Faith is a gift from God. Yes. Faith is a gift from God. It's not something that we generate no. No. within our own self. Uh, it is a gift from God. But let's look at the Bible definition um, for faith. Alright? So uh, we're looking here at Hebrews 11 and verse 1. Hebrews 11 and verse 1. And it says that now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The evidence of things not seen. So let's look at these words for a moment. Substance. What's a substance? Something to handle and touch. Something that you can use. Okay, something you can use, something you can handle, something you can touch. Yeah, sort of matter. Matter. Substance. Matter. Okay. <laughs> Alright. So if you say that what 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 gives a person substance? What gives a person substance? <laughs> the character. <laughs> the character? All right. Oftentimes when we talk about substance, we think about material things, don't we? Yeah. So we talk about that big house. We talk about that nice car. Uh, we talk about you know, having that yacht. Uh, we talk about going to five holidays a year. You know, within what this, this is a person of substance. Alright? Um, but this is saying that we need to have substance. So there's substance meaning that there's something to see, to hold on to. Right? Uh, can I hold on to the air? I may try, but can I hold on to the desk? Yes. Alright, there's substance there. Alright? So that's substance. Substance of things hoped for. But what is hope? Receiving something that you never... To receive something or looking for, for something. So to receive something or looking for something, what is hope? Looking for... It's like... It's like if you're on an airplane, you, you're going, you know you're going to the station is home. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to arrive there. It's a, it's, a, it's a hope of looking forward to something. Okay, it's a hope of looking forward to something. 
So you go to the bus stop and you hope that the bus will we'll come. come. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Yes. All hope right. For some hope for something better. Yeah. There's a hope for something better every day. You hope for something better. And our okay. question, our hope is for, for heaven. Right? Okay. Yes. We have a hymn that says, "We have this yes. hope." All right. Yes. All right. So where is our hope? Jesus. All right. Our hope is in the Father. It says. But the Bible, <clears throat> sorry, but in the Bible, hope is a, a confident expectation of what God has promised, and its strength is in His faithfulness. Right? That's, that's what the Bible means by hope. So we are putting our hope and our trust in God. We are trusting His word that when He says He will do A or B, indeed, he will do it. Do it. Yeah. All right? Yeah. He will do it. Now, what is evidence? Something. Evidence of things not seen. What is evidence? Evidence is proof. Proof? proof? Yes, yes. All right? Okay. Evidence is proof. Anything else? Evidence is something that, yeah. You can use, you can use that evidence in, to prove something that sometimes is not there, but you can use that evidence, I mean, something can come out of it. Okay, so let, let's say that you were going to court. What would you need to have? Evidence of what you have said. You need to have evidence or proof of the allegation that you're making against the other person, okay? Um, unless you have evidence that would prove that the allegation you're making is correct, the judge will just throw out because of lack of evidence. What evidence do we have as Christians? No, we have the evidence that Jesus said that go away and have come again. Okay? And I will receive you unto my shelter. Mm -hmm. Evidence was demonstrated when the, he was ascended. They, they, those two men say, okay, the same, this is the same, go, he will come again. Okay. All right, so God made a promise that he is going to prepare a place for us. Do we have any evidence of that? Yeah, in the Bible. His word. His word. All right. So we, we we have His word. Yes. yes. All right. We need faith, my brother. Say again. That's why we need faith yeah. to believe His word, to trust His word. This this the mind out there, the people out there, don't they need? They don't have that, and they don't they won't accept what you tell them. Okay. They want other evidence. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. All right. So then. Uh, God has made a promise to us, and we've learned to trust yeah. Him, so that we, 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 we know now that when He said He will do it, we believe that He will do it because He's faithful. He's faithful. All right? He is faithful um, to us. All right, let's, let's look at some other things. So then, um, so faith <coughs> is an attitude of trust in God. Faith is an attitude of trust in God. Okay? What is believed about God, the world, others, and myself? Okay, so that's what uh, faith is. Um, okay, I'm just making sure that you're with me. Uh, so it's a commitment to God and others. Who here has made a commitment? To God. To God. Yeah. Well, Jesus, I promise to serve you. Is it day. only God that we make a commitment to? All right, husband and wife, you made a commitment. <laughs> you made a commitment. All right, you made a commitment to rear your children yes. in the best godly way that you can you can do. So we make commitments, don't we? Do we often keep our commitments? Sometimes we break them. Alright? 
And that's why we can have the confidence in God because we know that He, do, he does what He says we will do. If I come to my brother here and say, uh, my brother, in two weeks' time, I'm going to need you to lend me 500 pounds. Alright? I'm going to need you to lend me 500 pounds. And you may say to me, yes, I will. So what's happening in my mind now is that in two weeks' time, my brother is going to give me 500 pounds. Alright, two weeks has elapsed. I went to my, I go to my brother, and my brother says to me, you know, I'm sorry, but I promised to lend you 500 pounds, but I really haven't got 500 pounds. What happens to me? Disappointed. I'm feeling disappointed. disappointed. All right, I'm feeling disappointed. So I'm, I'm wanting to make the point that how this is how we oftentimes disappoint God because we make a promise to Him that we will be faithful to Him. But guess what we do when the time comes to fulfill the promise, we are not able uh, to do that. So faithful, a faithful way of life that follows from those beliefs, attitudes, and commitments. When you put all those three together, we become faithful with them. We are being, we are exercising faith. Uh, we are exercising uh, faith. I want to tell you a story you may have heard of this man, uh, Charles Bolden. Um, you might have read the story. Uh, I guess from your faces, I don't think you you've heard of it. No. <laughs> All right. Um, apart from what, well, you can't see that screen very well. Maybe I've gone too. Far. I'm not gone here yet. That's what it is. Um, he's a, a famous tightrope walker. All right. And I'm just going to paraphrase his story. And so one day he, you know, Niagara Falls, do you? Yes. Have you ever been there? It's a nice place if you ever go there, try and visit there. But he stretches a tightrope across Niagara Falls. Alright? And he was doing all kinds of tricks on that rope. So he'd walk across it, he'll carry a stick, he'll carry um, a cooker, he'll carry all sorts of things across Niagara Falls. And so um, the people were there cheering from those from Canada, those from America. And they would be there cheering every time he walks across Niagara Falls. So the reporter went to one person um, because they were, they were into it. They were quite excited that this was happening. And he goes from person to person, do you believe that Mr. Baldwin can walk across this tightrope? And they all said, yes, we believe. It goes to another person, do you believe that Mr. Baldwin can walk across this tarp rope pushing whatever he was pushing? And they said, yes, we believe. Yes, we believe. And then he went to one person that says, yes, he believes or she believes. And he said, would you sit in the wheelbarrow while Mr. Baldwin... Bob? 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 thank you pushes the wheelbarrow across Niagara Falls. What was the response? No. <laughs> now, what's the difference between belief and faith? <laughs> Is it enough to believe? No. Right? The devil believes and trembles, but does he change? No. All right? So is it enough to just believe? No. Right? Our belief has to be put into action. Now the story goes that eventually somebody did sit in that wheelbarrow. It happened to be his mother. Right? She had faith enough in him that she would sit, uh, go and sit in the wheelbarrow. I guess this unique story illustrates a real life picture of what faith actually is. Uh, the crowd watched these daring feats. They said 
they believe, but their actions prove they truly Amen. did not believe. Amen. All right? It goes on. Similarly, it is one thing for us to say we believe in God. However, it's true faith when we believe God and put our faith and trust in His Son, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Faith. A uh, passage from Ezekiel. Let's just read this together if you can see it. It says, Faith in Christ is a personal Savior who will give strength Doesn't it? 
and it gives us a lot of responsibility. All right. Let's move on then to 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 hope. What is hope? What is hope? No evidence. All right. Let let me take you there. Hope is con <clears throat> commonly used to mean a wish. Its strength is in the strength of the person's desire. You get that? Yes. Its strength is in the strength of the person's desire. Okay? Okay. But in the Bible, hope is the confident expectation of what God has promised and his strength is in his faithfulness. You see the difference? All right, you see the difference? Um, so that's one aspect of hope. Um, hope, oops. Hope is a confidence in God and his promises. All right? Confidence that in Christ, God is stronger than evil. Love is stronger than hate. Light is stronger than darkness. Life is stronger than death. That's one, two, two. That's his offering in terms of hope. And he's quite right. Um, it's quite right because when our hope is in God, we cannot fail. That is good news for today and hope for tomorrow. For tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Hmm? What's the good news of today? Christ is coming, Christ is coming Christ is soon. What's the hope of tomorrow? That he will? That he will come. come. Yes. Alright? He will come. And may the God of all hope fill you with all joy and peace by your faith in him until by the power of the Holy Spirit you overflow with hope. Romans 15 and verse 8. Now the text says that you come a point whereby you will overflow with hope. Mm. Now, imagine that I have a cup here and I keep pouring hope in it. You're going to come to a point when that cup will be filled, wouldn't it? And if I try to put any more hope in it, what's going to happen? It's going to overflow. But guess what? If my hope is overflowing and I'm standing by my brother, he's likely to get a cup now. All right? But guess what? Although he may be able to get some of it, he's got to go to the source for himself. Yes. Remember the story of the ten version? Yes. He also has to go to the source in order to maintain that level of hope. Okay? Uh, 1 Corinthians 13 verses 4 to 5. It says, love is what? Patient. Love is, love does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it is, sorry, it keeps no record. Amen. It keeps no record. You know, as, as humans, we are good at keeping record. Mm -hmm. And I guess in line with the lesson that we've been looking at today, forgiveness. You know, so I may go to my brother and I said, well, brother, I've sinned against you. Can you forgive me? And he might say to me, well, no. Because five years ago, you did me X. Ten years ago, you did me Y. 
15 years ago, we did me Z. Hmm? Now, what's happening to that brother? If he's record, keeping those records. I guess, as long as he's holding on to them, he's getting bitter and, more bitter. and bitter and bitter. And that's why the advisor advise us that we shouldn't let the sun go down on our wrath. Because we won't sleep good. Yes. You won't sleep good if the sun goes down on your wrath. You better wake up. You better wake up. More angry than when you went to, to bed. Alright? So it doesn't score. Remember when, who was it that went to Christ? How many times should I forgive my brother? Alright? And Peter thought he was being magnanimous when he said, No, forgive our brothers. Seven. Seven times. But what did Christ say? Seven times. Seven times 70. That's 490. Does it mean that I should start? So, well, that's one. That's two. That's four hundred. That's four six nine. That's four seventy. Now you're gonna get my wrath. Wow. Is that what God intended? No. It means that we can't keep track. How many of us is in this room today? Let's say I was trying to do that with everybody that was in this room. And unless I'm a very meticulous person, I'm likely to lose track after a while, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah? I'm likely to lose track. But the fact is that we should be continually forgiven. 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 Continually forgiven. So that's, that's hope. And then we come to um, love. What is love? What is love? I'm sure that you all here experience love. Hmm? I'm sure that you all here experience love. All right. Everybody is silent. We haven't experienced love. Is it only God's love that we experience? All right. Okay then. So um, it says that there's hope. Sorry, there's faith. There's hope. And there's love, but love is the greatest. So although I might have faith, although I might have hope, something is missing, isn't it? I need to have love. Because guess what? Where's my faith coming from? My love for God. Where is my hope coming from? My love for God. So then let's, let's have a look at this. That a deep feeling and attachment to God and others. All right? A deep feeling and attachment to God and others. An act of will and a choice about how we live. All right? A choice. Now let's emphasize that word choice. A choice about how we live. Live. Now the Bible is our instruction manual, and it covers. I mean, we're looking at that this week in our lesson, Matthew 18, how we ought to deal with one another. Yeah. You look at the commandments. Who's the first four for? God, God. And the last six. Man. How we interact with one another. All right. So God hasn't left us without instruction. All right. He's not left us without instruction, but we make a choice as to how we apply God's instruction in our life. Okay? A move from self-centeredness to seeking the well-being of others. Seeking the well-being of others. And then lastly in that slide, God's character is love. Alright? God's character is love. So God is God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into this world so that we might live through him. 
John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Faith, hope, and love. Three attributes, three qualities, if you will. If God was to measure me up right now, uh, let's, let's say that if he was to cut me in half right now, would he see hope? Would he see faith? Would he see hope? And would he see love? Because as Christians, that's what we need to be reflecting. Yeah. We are reflecting the characteristics of God. And with God you will find faith, you will find hope, and you will find love. Okay? So, what is the difference between hope, faith, and love? Um, what is the difference between hope, faith, and love? I guess by now we, we should have the answer. But um, we're going to go through this uh, together. So, faith. Okay? So now faith is the assurance, this is from another translation. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Simply put, the biblical definition of faith is trusting in something you cannot explicitly prove. Now, if I were to say to you, how do you prove God? How do you prove God? If you are speaking to an atheist, how do you convince an atheist that God exists? You can convince him he is, he is real. But you can show him evidence, which you can say, look, you can see the sun shining, you can feel the wind, you know, but you can convince him again. Yeah. Yeah. As, as sometimes we, we know that electricity is there, we put on the switch, it's going to go. Mm. But he mentioned, you say, well, you know, but well, it's us that generated it, created it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, um, the sun is just a matter of nature. What is nature? All right? We may not be able to prove God to somebody, but we can demonstrate yeah. his love. Yeah. We can demonstrate his characteristic. We can give our testimony as to how he is impacting on our life. And hence, because of my trust and my faith in him, this is why I may behave this way. You know, sometimes you're at work, people may say, well, how is it that you don't do X? And how is it that you don't do Y? Why do you think they're asking you that question? Hmm? Why do you think they're asking you that question? Because they're seeing that you are behaving differently from how they would behave. They're noticing that not every second word that comes out of your mouth is a swear word. They're noticing that maybe you don't use tea or coffee, or maybe you don't eat certain meats. And they're clocking onto it. There's something different about this person. When we are Transmitting the characteristics of God, we cannot but we cannot but seems different, not peculiar, different. But people notice that there's a change, there's a difference um, in us. And that was Hebrews 1, 11 as we looked at. So then let's let's look back at hope then. Um, so the Bible hope is built on what? All right, so we're getting some order here now. So we have faith, and because of our faith, we then have hope, and become what pulls those together is love. So the Bible hope, sorry, the Bible, biblical hope is built on faith. Hope is the essence, earnest rather, uh, appreciation. Anticipation, thank you. Anticipation 
that comes with belief in something good. Hope is a confident expectation of that naturally seems stems from faith. Hope is a peaceful assurance that something that hasn't happened yet will indeed happen. Hope must involve something that is yet that is as yet unseen. Hope that is seen is no hope at all. Right? Hope that is seen is no hope uh, at all. Okay then, so um, what is love? And we go to 1 Corinthians 13. Alright? Okay, then let's take some time to, to, to look at these. So hope is patient. How many of us are patient? <laughs> All right. How many of us are patient? I know that man can be tested easily sometimes. All right. How many of us is kind? Okay. Um, how many of us doesn't envy? How many of us doesn't envy? Um, how many of us don't boast? You know, we can get proud sometimes, you know. Something we achieve, something we get. That was me. <laughs> and we forget that it's God that's given us the strength yes. to make those achievements. All right, we shouldn't dishonor. Now, if I'm speaking um, disrespectfully about a brother or a sister, what am I doing? I'm dishonoring them. I'm also dishonoring God. When we talk about murder, we tend to think about, you know, we use an implement. So I may use a knife, I may use a hammer, I may use a gun, I may use a sword. We, we think about those type of implement, implements. But this thing here is deadly. It's a deadly weapon. And so we, we talk about character assassination. We can kill people, kill their character with our tongue. Alright? So self-seeking. Hmm? Self-seeking. Uh, love is not easily provoked. Another word for that would be angered. Yes? Love is not easily angered. So, I went to church today. And this brother, as he was walking past me, stood on my toe. And I let it go. I come to church next week, and this brother, as he walked past me, stood on my toe. And something started to happen with me now, but I let it go. And I come to church, he followed me, and that same brother, as he walked past me, stood on my toe. What's happening with me now? <laughs> okay, and you're right. No, I have to let this brother know that what he's doing, that he's telling up my soul. But guess how I'm going to do that? You don't know, say, every time you walk past me, you're stepping on me too. <laughs> what is likely to happen to this brother? Now? Right? His wall is going to go up. Alright, and guess what? Now we're going to have a war of words. And if God doesn't step in, we're going to have a war of, right, a real, a real war. But if I went to my brother and said, my brother, I'm not sure if you realize what, every time you walk past me, you seem to spread it on top. That causes some pain. And I'd just appreciate it if you didn't do that in the future. If he takes offense, am I giving offense? No. No. Am I giving offense? No. But he could still take offense. But whose problem is that? It's his problem. That's his problem. I'm doing what the scripture is advising me to do. Make him aware of what he's doing. It's up to him then to, to put that right. So, because no wrong, um, 
doesn't delight in evil, uh, but rejoice with the truth. It always protects. Love always protects. Do you protect the ones that you love? Yes. Yes. We tend to do. All right. We protect the one that we we love. It always trusts a person. It always trusts. Do we always trust God or our fellow man? No. Okay. It always trusts. It always hope. It always persevere. Hmm? How much perseverance do we do? Allow ourselves to do. Alright, so that's that's the essence of love. Alright? So if you are reflecting the love of God, these things, well the first half of it will be far from you. The bottom part is what you'll be doing, you'll be exercising. <laughs> All right. So that's the difference between the three. But do you now see why the one on the right hand side is the greatest of all? Hmm? Yes. How likely it is that my faith will impact on others? It's quite likely that my faith can impact on others. But, hmm? How likely it is that my hope will impact on others? Okay? But you see here that my love has to. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Yeah. My love has to impact on others, either in a negative way or in a positive way. And that's why the scripture is saying that the greatest of these, of these is love. And so we've gone full circle. We come back to where we started. And now abide these abide faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. We are in a time of the year whereby in the name of Christ. Hope you get what I'm saying. In the name of Christ, we will do some human kindness. I wonder if it wasn't for the time of the year, would we still be doing those human kindness? Would we still be making sure that our neighbor doesn't eat on Christmas Day and he's on our own? Hmm? Or are we just responding to the circumstances that place itself before us? Or are we genuinely uh, caring because God expects us to care? <clears throat> so, how does God love is reflect how is God's love reflected from me? That's the question for you today. How am I reflecting? God's love. And that has to be a daily basis. Not something that I switch on and switch off. It's something that is permanent. God is permanent. He endures forever. So my challenge to you today <coughs> is to allow the Holy Spirit to let you reflect the love of God. To your fellow believers, to your neighbor. You know something? If we were living the life we ought to be living, we wouldn't need sermons. You look at me blankly. No. Right? Because your neighbor would be seeing the reflection of Christ in you on a daily basis. Yeah. And that because it says a sermon lived is more, it has a better impact than a sermon preached. Yes. But guess what? If I were to come into this church and say, I'm doing a survey and say, well, how is brother so and so? How is sister so and so? And I may get a report that may be glowing. 
And I said, okay, let me take that to his neighbor. <laughs> how is Mr. So-and-so? And how is Mrs. So-and-so? Would those two reports tally? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> We're saying it should. Yeah, it should tally. But does it tally? What I'm saying is that you know we can be one thing yeah. in church, yeah. Yeah. but we can be another thing yeah. outside of our church. Whatever I'm doing, yeah. so that I can be a witness yeah. of God's love. Yeah. Brothers and sisters. And now abide faith, hope, and love. I trust that through the Holy Spirit, you will allow the love of God to permeate through you in everything that you do, in every way that you are.